so hello there everyone how there thanks for watching this so this video is all about the summary for the chapter 2 of the Cisco met ahad then if you want to learn about that then just continue watching so hello guys i'm back and this is the start for the summary of the chapter 2 as you notice i'm in a cisco packet tracer which i'm going to use for the summary of the chapter 2 so for the chapter 2 chapter 2 is about to configure a networking operating system so this network devices use an operating system called a network operating system those devices are the switches or router or access point and firewalls so a network operating system enable devices hardware to function and provides an interface or interface for user to interact the cisco internetwork operating cisco uh, system or cisco ios is a generic term for the collection of network operating system used by cisco networking device what is operating system all end devices and network devices require an operating system so the portion of the os that interacts directly the or with computer hardware is what we call the kernel so remember the kernel is the one that are communicating to the computer hardware next is the portion that interfaces with application and user user is known as shell the user can interact with the shell using a command line interface or cli or a graphic user interface or gui gui mm. The user interacts directly with the system in a text-based environment by entering the command on the keyword at the command prompt. So when you were going to, later we'll show you what is the command prompt and entering command at the keyword in the command prompt, you're going to type some command in the command prompt. So you can talk to the, to the devices. Not to literally, literally talk, but to tell them what to do the operating system of home routers is usually called firmware the most common method for computing, configuring a home router is by, is by using a web browser based GUI so the OS or the network operating system are similar to the PC operating system PC operating system also use a mouse to make selection and run the programs, enter the text and text-based command, view output on a monitor. It is same as the P the for the network base program. So uh, as I'm going to do in this packet tracer for first put a devices so this in this part of the screen. We're going to see the end devices. Then I will choose the PC. Then put it in. Next is I will put or click a switch. Sorry, I click router. I mean, I'm going to click switch, which I will choose 2960 series switch. Then put here here to to move this. You are going to select remove this in the middle. So that's it. This is the first things I need to do. Now I'm going to discuss the most common method for the access method. 
even though a Cisco switch will function immediately configuring initial settings or recommendation best practices. So, if you're going to connect this PC to the switch, it was immediately function. But the best things you need to do is to configure it or the, for the initial configuration. There are several ways to access the CLI environment and configure a device. The most common methods are console, secure shell SSH, and the telnet. So what is the difference between those three? Console is the need for the initial configuration. This is a physical management port that provides out-of-band access to a Cisco device. Out-of-band access refers to the access via a ded dedicated management channel that is used for device maintenance purpose only. Secure shell, remote management or it is secure, from the word itself. SSH is a method for remotely establishing a secure CLI connection through a virtual interface. The Telnet. Telnet is an insecure method of remotely establishing a CLI session through a virtual interface over a network. Unlike SSH, Telnet does not provide a secure encrypted connection. So, to, to initially configure this switch, we just first click the console connection. This is the console connection, the blue one. Click the PC, then RS32, then go to the search it, go to the switch, then click the console. So you are now have a physical connection to the or connection to the switch from and the PC. So now from the PC where we go we're going to to go, to have initial configuration to the switch we we'll go to the PC click the PC then this is what we're going to do now go to the terminal emulation program go to the desktop find the terminal emulation program is it I think then this is the the data was pre presented and click OK. Now we are we now can configure the devices. So press a set in the screen. Press return to get started. As you notice on this part, it's that it's stated switch, then there is a greater than sign. So, um, there are primary command modes, user exec and the privilege exec mode. And we are now in the user exec mode. Why I say is that so? Because of the symbol greater than sign, this one. This mode has limited capabilities, but it's useful for basic operation. It allows only a limited number of basic monitoring command, but does not allow the execution of any command that may change the configuration of the device. To go to the privilege exec mode, you're going to type enable. We, we know that we are in the privileged exec mode if the greater sign changes into number sign or hashtag. Privileged exec mode. To execute configuration command, a network administrator must access privileged exec mode. High configuration mode, like global configuration mode, I will tell you what is global configura configuration mode will be, and can, also, can only be reached from privileged exec mode. Then to go to the to the global configuration mode, we're going to type configure terminal. Now we are in the global configuration mode because of this sign. The go config then the number sign. Now, there are 
are sub configuration mode in the global configuration mode the first one is the line configuration mode which used to configure console ssh telnet and aux access next is the interface configuration mode which used to configure a switch port on a router network interface Now I'm going to talk about the and how to rename a device. So now going we're in the user exec mode. I type enable. Enter then. Configuration exec mode to the global configuration mode. Configure terminal. Enter. I type host name. Host name. For example, SW FL one. Switch underscore then then switch underscore then for the floor. Have a floor one. Or it can be as you can see the name is change now we put security on this switch how can we put security on this switch it's through the service fast is through the enable secret and the password with the login I'm not going to, to, to show it to you but I'm going to discuss it now I'll continue to talk about the summary for the chapter 2 so it is important some it is important to configure the host name and of course the password or the security of the, a device first why we need to configure the host name because there are similar as you can see on my on this as you can see late um on the first thing i do in the packet tree service has changed the host name its name first is switch which if all the floors of the switches has a name switch it is difficult to identify which switch is for the specific floor you want to configure now and Also, renaming as uh, devices is used for for the for initial configuration from other places. To remove the configure host name and return to switch to the default prompt, use the no host name global in the global config config command. So if you want to to erase the name you change in the switch or in the router, you will type in the global configuration command the no host name. Next we're going to talk about the secure device access. The use of weak or easily guessed password continues to be the security issue in many in many facets of the business world. Network devices including home wireless routers should always have password configured to limited address access. So in, in, in creating a password, use a strong password that are not easily guessed. Then configure password. The most impor important password to configure is access to the previous exact mode. To secure privilege success access, use the enable secret password in the global config command. To secure the user exec access, the console port must be configured as shown. 
and the enter line console configuration must using the line console zero global configuration command. The zero is used to represent the first and the most case of the only console interface. Next, specify the user exec password using the password password command. Finally, enable user exec use access using the login command. Console access will now require a password before gaining access to the user exec mode. Virtual terminal or BTY lines enable remote access to the devices. To secure BTY line, use the SSH and Telnet enter line BTY mode using the line BTY015. Global config command. Many Cisco switches support up to 16 BTY line that are number 0 to 15. Next, specify the BTY password using the password, password command. Lastly, enable BTY access user using the login command. So those things that I've said earlier is used for securing the privilege exact mode and also the console on and also the user exact mode or the console for the startup. If you have a strong if you secure this, it is can limit the access of unauthorized people. So encrypt password. The startup config and running config file display most password in plain text. This is security threat since everyone can see the password and use if they have access to this file. To encrypt password, use the service password encryption global config command. The command applies weak encryption to all encrypted password. Use the show running config command to verify that the password are now encrypted. Next is the banner message. What is the banner message? Banner message or message of the day. To create banner message of the day on a network devices, use the banner MLTD hashtag the message of the day hashtag config command. The hashtag is the command syntax called the delimiting character. You can use the, any delimiting character if it is not inside the message that we're going to use. For this, they use hashtag, but you can also use double quotation mark or anything the limiting characters you want, provided that it was not included inside your message. In the banner, you can put the local laws and corporate policies to warn the people who are want to access unauthorized lead to the to your network don't put welcome or invited to, to those banner message because banner message is used to warn who are to want to enter the network unauthorizedly if changes made so if you are finished to do that, the configuration, uh, initial configuration of the device, you need to save, save that. For that, if you reload the device, it will not be gone. So, the things you have do done is save in the running config. The file stored in the random access memory or RAM that reflects the current configuration. Modifying a running configuration affect the operation of Cisco devices immediately. RAM is a volatile memory. It loses all of its content when the device is powered off or restarted. So to save that, you are going to save that in the startup config. Startup config, the file stored in non-volatile random access memory on NVRAM that contains all of the command that will be used by the device upon a startup or reboot. NVRAM does not lose its contents when the device is powered off. To save this, you are going to go to the privilege exact mode then type copy running config to the copy running config startup config. As you press enter, you will now the running your, your running config is now saved in the startup config. So even you want to reload the switch, those things that you have changed in the switch will not be lost. Alter the running configuration. If changes made to the running configuration do not have the desired effect and the running config file has yet been saved. 
you can restore the device to its previous configuration by removing the change command individually or re reload the device using the reload privilege exec mode command to restore the startup config. If you have changes in the, if you mistakenly do mistake in configuration the device, you will just type reload to reload the device. And it will erase the all the running, um, all the things in the running config. So that's for my summary for the chapter two, and thank you.